Hey guys, I'm finally back. Thank you all of you guys for 800 subscribers. I apologize for not posting in this past couple of months, but I'm excited to say that I'm back with a great animation tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to animate using GSAP in your Next.js application. So let's get into it. So this is the animation that I've came up with. I created this animation with the help of other YouTubers that I will link down below. I built this animation for my new website redesign and I thought I'd share it because it came out really nice. So basically the stickers pop up on a loading animation and then when you move your mouse you get a nice effect. Also when you scroll the stickers disappear and scale down. Okay, let me start off by saying that I will only be covering the loading animation as well as the scaling animation on scroll. Also, I'll be sure to link the code down below with the files so you can go ahead and take a look at it for yourself. So let's get into it. Okay, so taking a look at the code, here we have my page. I'm using Next.js and we have our main wrapper with two sections one with the hero and one with just another section for to be able to scroll. Here I've outsourced the hero copy into a different component just so it's simpler and easier to look at. And here we have the sticker panels which are positioned absolutely to the section. Like I mentioned previously, Oliver does a great job explaining how he built this component. So I'll link his video down below if you want to check out how to make your images or stickers move with your mouse. But in this video, I'll be showing you how to do the scaling and the loading animation for each sticker. So each sticker is one of these images. And as you can see, I've laid them out here on each panel. And the magic actually happens in this image wrapper, which wraps every single sticker to animate it. So let's build this image wrapper. Okay, so here in this image wrapper component, we're gonna start off by receiving a class name, some children, and a custom value, which will dictate what time each sticker will load. So that's the custom value. Similar to frame or motion, if you're familiar with that. We will pass in a class name in order to position each sticker accordingly. Using Tailwind Merge, we'll pass in the default Tailwind classes and then the special class names for the position. So now let's create the animation using GSAP. So first we will need a reference to the image itself. So let's create an image ref and we're going to use use ref from react. So let's import this and we'll tie it on to the div itself. Now we can start creating the animation. So we'll use the use effect, actually the use layout effect, which is recommended by GSAP in order to animate with React, we will need to register the GSAP plugin for a scroll trigger. Basically the scroll trigger will let you animate based on the scroll. So let's begin with the loading animation. So the loading animation will use a GSAP from, and we want the, we want to reference the image dot current since we're using um, a reference and then here is where we will pass in the initial properties so we want the opacity to be zero and the scale to be zero okay so now we want to animate from so we set from now to the same thing which would be the image ref here we want the opacity to be one, then the scale to be one. So basically it's gonna go from zero to one. And we want the delay of a custom value because if we don't have a custom value, they will all appear at the same time. So here with the custom value, we can delay it by 0.3 seconds, which will make it appear like everything's appearing in a staggered effect. And the ease, we're just using power two, which is basically a pre-made easing function from GSAP. Now I forgot to import GSAP and also you want to import scroll trigger from GSAP all. And now we should have our animation. Perfect. You saw how it's staggered. So basically 
we gave each element a custom property and this will just multiply by the three so it will appear as a staggered effect. Also, here you may see that we have the div, the wrapper, with an opacity and a scale of zero by default. This is because if we don't give it, <laughs> GSAP will, it will basically break the, so basically you just wanna give it the default opacity and scale zero so it doesn't break the animation. Okay, so make sure to give your layout effect a dependency array or else it will break your animation. Okay, so moving on to the scroll animation. So basically what we want is whenever we scroll, we want the, the image to scale down. So if we give this a border, so how this animation works is that when the top of the border hits the top of the page, we want the image to start scaling down. So in order to do that, we need the scroll trigger. So here, let's define the animation we want to create. So let's just call this animation and we will make this an arrow function and let's create a timeline. So let timeline equal gsap.timeline and we will pass in a scroll trigger and we want to specify that the trigger should be our image ref dot current so that way we can use the element as the trigger and we want the trigger to start at the top of the div so basically here at the top of this div we want it to start and we want it to end at the bottom when it reaches the top of the page so it will end at the bottom when it hits the top perfect now here we want to specify that scrub is true that means we can use our mouse to scrub back and forth. This is something that I figured that is way better in GSAP. I've tried, I tried using Framer Motion to animate something like this. Although they do have a timeline function, it's much harder to use play controls or I've found it difficult. Uh, the documentation isn't the best. It's really good, but there is still like things that are not super clear, or at least to me. Uh, so I decided to use GSAP for this animation. All right, now with our timeline, we're going to do a two. We're going to do the image, image ref dot current, and we want to scale this box to zero with an ease of none. Now, in order to call this function, we want to go here to our last two. So whenever the animation loads up, and it finishes we want then to activate this animation because if we activate this uh, before this one loads it'll just create an issue so here we can do an on complete so when the animation is complete we want to animate the animation perfect now let's take a look at this and if we load it up okay it loads now the animation should be running so whenever we go ahead and use it it's all nice and here's the scrub. So the scrub basically means that we can go, you can scrub back and forth like a DJ and see the timeline go ahead and do its animation. So this animation was also found on YouTube. And what he did was added a little randomized function that will create a random transform origin for each image, which is pretty cool because instead of having here instead of having the images just go down from the top to the bottom if you transform it from the bottom it creates this nice little effect they scale down from the corner which is really really nice it adds a little flair to the animation i'd say let me just remove the border and that is it that's all the code you need to create this beautiful animation like i said i'll link down below where I got my inspiration from. And yeah, I just wanted to share this cool animation. Thanks for watching. Also, yes, I'm not going anywhere this time. There are more videos to come and more animations to see. So stay tuned for more types of videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.